Greetings, folks. Bob Asadi Deals on Wheels. Bob at SellMeTheCar.com. Bob at SellMeTheCar.com. Link in the description below. Purpose of this video is to show you how to troubleshoot a vehicle. Now, perhaps more important than troubleshooting the vehicle is finding the right vehicle for you, given your budget, given your specific needs, given the maintenance, the insurance, everything that's involved, the reliability, what's important to you, the safety, the convenience, the tech features, all of that, you know, performance. What I want you to do at the conclusion of this video, I will have four other links posted that are relevant to this troubleshooting video. I want you to watch the one that talks about how to find the right vehicle for you. It's a marathon, but I actually walk you through all the websites and give you all the tools that you need to make 100% sure that you get the maximum bang for your transportation dollar. So the first thing I do when I go to the auctions and I'm looking at a vehicle is I look at the vehicle from a distance. And what I'm checking for is to see from a distance and I do it in sunlight and I love it when the sun is right above the vehicle because you get maximum sunlight exposure to all the panels. And you're able to see discoloration between the panels. So if one of the doors is painted, you're able to tell much more easily from a distance than you are from close up, at least to the for the novice, for the untrained eye. And while I'm looking at it from a distance, I'm also looking underneath the bumper. You can see the scratches and imperfections a lot easier from a distance than you can from close up, as well as the rocker panels. If there are any dents or if there are any scratches that deface the vehicle, or uh, you're able to see them from a distance. Rocker panels would be, you know, way on the bottom underneath the doors there. I'm also cognizant of the condition of the wheels and tires, and I'm looking at the level at which the vehicle sits. I don't want altered suspension. I don't want this thing to be dumped to the ground. I want factory suspension. Uh, it would also behoove you to know what the factory wheels should look like and what size they should be for the particular vehicle. So after I do my initial walk around the vehicle, what I do then, front and rear, I want to make sure that all of the fog lights are in the front bumper. If there are any plastic inserts that should be in there, all of those are in. All the parking sensors that I'm not missing, you know, one of these caps right here. Some people are very particular about their vehicles, so I pay attention to all of that. Then what I do is I walk up to the vehicle, and you might want to even do this before you walk around the whole vehicle. I just take a quick glance inside. I want to make sure it's not trashed. I'm not into vehicles that have all ripped up seats and, you know, smell like a vagrant's been sleeping in it for a month. Take a good look. Make sure it suits your needs. This particular one's in fantastic condition. Usually the wear spots are right here where your left armrest or elbow rest is, and also down here in the seated area. Perforated leather, you know, this one's very well appointed. It's an ES350-08 Lexus product. And, uh, you know, you look for wear on the steering wheel. You know, you look, you want to lift up the carpet and make absolutely sure that it's clean. This one's really clean. It just needs a minor detail job and it'll look fantastic. Okay, make sure the door panels are nice and tight. So you just take a quick glance. You're not going to really look at it in detail. Then what you're going to do is you're going to do one more walk around and now you're going to look very closely at the seams, make sure they're all equidistant, you know, the, the fit and finish. Make sure that you get a nice, clean reflection. Look at your reflection in every panel. Make sure that it's not shiny in one and then matted in another. That'll instantly tip you off as to whether or not the vehicle has been painted. Look closely for drips to see if the vehicle has been painted. Look for, you know, the usual imperfections you see in the paint. There might be dust. There might be um, fish eyes. Uh, there might be orange peel. Just make sure that all the panels match and all the seams line up. Look at the headlights. Make sure that they match. Now this particular one, that's a brand new headlight on the left. This one on the right is not brand new. So that could be a tip-off that the side that has the new headlight was in an accident. Or it could be vice versa. Or the fender was replaced. Or you know it was just hit up here in the bumper area somewhere and uh, you know, it damaged the previous headlight and they replaced it. I don't think that was the case with this one. Maybe they just had a malfunctioning one and they replaced it. So you wanna be aware of that. Next thing you're gonna do, provided it suits your needs, meets your requirements, what you're gonna do now is you're just gonna pop the hood. Pop the hood, but don't turn the vehicle over. All 
Okay, now we're going to play detective. When you pop the hood, first you want to locate where the battery is, uh, where the engine coolant is, definitely those two, brake reservoir, and uh, the oil filler cap. And what you're going to do, make, make wear gloves, okay? I wear rubber gloves when I do this at the auction. First thing you want to do is you want to pop this off. This is the oil filler cap, and you want to take a look. You want to make sure that it's not all crusty. Although, depending on the age of the vehicle, that's okay. You definitely don't want to see chocolate milk, okay, as we like to call it in the industry, around the oil cap, which would indicate that at some point the vehicle may have had a busted head gasket that was repaired, or it currently has a leaky head gasket, in which case you walk away from the vehicle immediately. You want to pull all the dipsticks, and you want to make sure that the, the fluid is the color that it should be, and that they don't smell funky or burnt. Some vehicles, the newer ones, don't have dipsticks, so be aware of that. Again, that'll be in your preliminary research. You'll know what to look for. Here's the engine coolant. You'll want to definitely make sure that the vehicle is cold. Okay, this one's hot. That's why I'm not going to do it. But you see that crust? Ideally, you don't want to see all that. I, I drove this vehicle from Southern California to here, okay, 300 miles. So I know it's in perfect mechanical condition. What you want to make absolutely sure, though, is that the coolant reservoir is not low in fluid. If it is, again, it could indicate that the engine is either burning coolant or that there is a leak somewhere in the cooling system. You, if it has a, a radiator cap, you would pop the radiator cap and again check the coolant level and make sure that it's not overly low, which would indicate what we just went over. The battery. Pop, uh, you know, take a look at the battery. There's a date on it, a date stamp, and uh, generally, you know, this one says it's got an 84-month warranty and it's a Lexus factory battery, okay? So if it's a dealer battery, the previous owner probably took immaculate care of the vehicle, all right? I mean, this is an 08 and the guy's still taking it over to the uh, Lexus dealer to get a new battery. So uh, you'll want to check that. If it's two or three years old, you're pretty safe. But if it's like four years old, five years old, you might want to consider the cost of a new battery into the price that you pay for the vehicle. You could always pop the uh, relay and fuse box and just make sure that you don't see anything rigged. You know, somebody's jumped a couple of connectors. You'll want to take off the uh, brake uh, fluid reservoir, take a look at that, make sure it's not all dirty and contaminated clean brake fluid. So that's what you're going to do. You could do the same thing with the power steering fluid. Next thing you're going to do is, now this has a bunch of covers over everything, over the nuts and bolts down here. What you want to do though, provided you don't have these or you take all of these off, you could do that. They're not going to let me do that at the auction, though. You want to check the bolts that fasten, you know, they'd be like underneath here. You'd want to check the bolts that fasten the fender, okay, onto the chassis of the vehicle. And you want to make sure they're not torqued on. Somebody, that would indicate they've been replaced. You know, somebody's taken those nuts off. Why would you take all of these nuts off unless it was to, it were for the purpose of removing a panel, right? That would, again, indicate that the vehicle has been in an accident. You want to make sure that everything aligns. If these are broken here, okay, the vehicle has had some sort of front impact, okay? If the grill's busted or every vehicle is different, some of these vehicles, you, if this cover weren't here, there were a bunch of little plastic connections that fasten the headlight onto the vehicle. If those plastic connections are damaged, see, you can see down here, if, if this, per, for example, that bolt were torqued on and this plastic clip here were damaged, we would know that there's been some sort of, in all probability, front end uh, impact with the vehicle okay next thing you're gonna do is you're going to look for you're gonna look at the belts again these covers make it a little bit difficult but normally you won't see this in older vehicles you're gonna take a look at the belts you're gonna look at the valve covers you're gonna look around them for leaking and if you can't get a good look if you can't get this cover off what you want to do is take your camera like my camera here and just stick it down there, okay? And just hit the record button. And after you're done, take a look at what you just recorded. And you'll be able to see, and you know, leave the light on, your little light on your camera, and you'll be able to see if there are leaks down there. Like for example, you know, I can get a good look by doing this behind the firewall here, okay? I could do the same thing underneath the vehicle if I want to see if there's frame damage. Or you could buy a little scope, 
that you could put down there. I do that with, uh, you know, the Porsche products, especially if I want to check the IMS bearing to see if it's been replaced or if it's leaking. So you'll want to do that. You'll want to check for leaks around hoses as much as you can. Snoop around down here and check for leaks around hoses, housings, valve cover gasket, you know, on the engine, on the transmission if it's a front wheel drive vehicle like this. You'll want to also look up here and make sure that you don't see big white stains which would indicate that the vehicle is overheated at some point. Uh, take a look at the condition of all the rubber. Make sure that nothing has been rigged, no duct tape around, you know, uh, hoses. Make sure that you don't see a big, uh, like this is a factory blue mark, but if it's a junkyard transmission or engine, there'll be a big blue or yellow mark on it when the transmission or engine is purchased from the junkyard. A lot of times people don't bother to erase that. That'll tip you off a little bit as to the integrity of the vehicle. Again, all the wiring, all the um, connections, make sure that they're stock, they're factory. Make sure it doesn't have a, uh, a, a PVC pipe with a K&N filter hanging off the, off the end of it, okay? You don't have plumbing, <laughs> okay? Like uh, uh, sprinkler plumbing as part of your intake system. That's going to make you walk away from that vehicle faster than a New York second. Make sure it's all stock, make sure it's all kosher. Now that you've done that, we're finally going to turn the vehicle over. Now when we turn it over, we're going to listen very carefully. In fact, the best idea is to have somebody turn it over for you while you stand here and you can hear everything. So we're going to turn it over and we're going to listen very carefully. We're going to listen for a, an exhaust leak. We're going to listen for valve ticking. We're going to listen for lower end noise. You know, if it's got bearing issues, you'll be able to tell quickly. This vehicle sounds excellent. Let's go back under the hood. Now you're going to listen very carefully and you're going to listen for squeaks. There might be a, a pulley that needs a, a, that, that the bearing is wearing out on. There might be a bad belt. If you hear excessive valve ticking, if it's acceptable, fine. But if it's excessive, you want to walk away from that vehicle. Now, what I also like to do, again, you want to make sure it's cool when you do this. When the vehicle is on, I like to see if any smoke comes out of here, indicating that there's blow-by you know, smoking out. Do it like this just in case, uh, you know, with the German vehicles, you'll get oil all over you. You want to protect yourself with the cap. But on the Japanese vehicles, usually it's safe to take off the cap. And you just want to make sure there isn't a lot of smoke coming out of there. Again, there might be a little bit of blow by just because of the age of the vehicle and the, the mileage on it. Also, you'll want to yourself give it gas, look out of the side view and the rear view mirror and make sure there isn't a lot of smoke coming out of the exhaust. And you'll want to be cognizant of the difference between condensation and legitimate oil, burning oil or burning coolant. Stick your hand in front of the exhaust and then smell your hand. If it smells like coolant or oil, you might want to walk away from that vehicle. I know I do. Now what you'll want to do when you have the vehicle on, let it stay on. And now, again, start snooping around. Now that you got everything flowing, look for leaks. Be familiar with the engine if you can with your preliminary research so you know where to look for leaks. You know exactly from where to where the coolant and the oil circulates and you can look for leaks. Again, you could step way back away from the vehicle and look underneath to see if it's leaking. Now you'll want to leave the vehicle running for the duration of your troubleshooting and what you want to do is you want to, again, look very carefully at everything, look for cracks in the uh, wood trim, test it all, make sure that everything that's supposed to open opens, including the dash, everything, this little armrest here, okay? Uh, if it's got, look, you're going to check all of the buttons, okay? All of the buttons on the vehicle. You're going to check the power windows, the power door locks, the side view mirrors. You're going to check all the keys on the remote, lock, unlock, panic, everything. You're going to make sure that all the actuators for the door locks lock and unlock. You're going to open every single door from the outside with the handle to make sure the handles all work and you're going to open it from the inside with the inside handle to make sure the inside handle works. You're going to check everything including the lumbar for the seats. You're going to make sure that the, all of these seatbelt covers are in place. You're going to make sure if it's got heated ventilated seats that the heated ventilated seats work. You're going to make sure that the navigation disc is in there and that the navigation functions properly. You're going to make sure that the air conditioner works, okay? If it's cold, 
that's fine. Ta I take a thermometer and I stick it in there and I make sure that the AC works and the heater works. I don't care if it's the dead of summer or winter. I want to make sure it works. Stick your hand in front of every single vent, including that one over there, to make sure that you're getting proper airflow, hot or cold, depending on what the settings are, because sometimes there will be actuators that control the passenger side versus the driver's side. So you want to make sure that you don't have just the driver's side vents working and the passenger side does not work. Okay, make sure the telescopic features work for your steering wheel, in and out, up and down. All the controls on the steering wheel. If uh, match up your uh, cell phone to the vehicle, if it's got, check the Bluetooth connection on the vehicle. Try and uh, hook up the um, auxiliary jack to your phone. See if you could stream your music, you could play your music. Everything, every button I want you to check, every button, okay? Then I want you to turn on the lights and I want you to check your headlights. Make sure your HID or projection headlights are working. Make absolutely sure that they're working. Check the blinkers, front and back. Uh, if you have someone with you, have them step on the brakes. Make sure your brake lights work. A lot of times you'll have warning lights though on the dash. You wanna make sure that you don't neglect the roof. Make sure the sunroof works, of course. Pull on these, make sure that they don't fall apart and that they're sturdy. The OS handles. You'll want to make sure there isn't a Coca-Cola explosion up there in the roof somewhere. Make sure the visors work. Man, these things can cause the f cost a fortune sometimes. Make absolutely sure all the lighting works. We're going to get into uh, the mechanical. What you're going to do, again, the vehicle is on. What you're going to do is you're going to step on the accelerator and you're going to give it gas up to 2,500 RPM, 2,000 to 2,500 RPM for 15 to 20 seconds just to get the coolant to circulate and you're trying to see if the vehicle overheats and then just let it idle and then continue your test. Now look, this next part depends on the auction. Some auctions, they allow you to take the vehicle out for a test drive and some auctions don't. So if you're allowed to take the vehicle out for a test drive, by all means, do so. Get it up to as fast as you can to make sure it doesn't vibrate. Um, Hit the brakes, make sure the brakes work. Check the suspension by doing a bunch of donuts. You can also check the suspension, if you can't take it out for a test drive, by turning the steering wheel all the way to the left or all the way to the right. You could do this. Jesus, okay. All right, you can come right over here. And if you can't see back there, here's what you do. Okay, you see? You bring it back out and you look at your video and then you're able to see, do you need tie rods? Okay, do you need a control arm? Do you need bushings? You do as much as you can. You know, you check your uh, discs, see if they're all scratched. Okay, are you going to need to replace your rotors or not? You could go in here and you can see how much brake pad you have left. Just little tricks of the trade. Incidentally, again, take a very close look at the wheels. Look for imperfections, like this is the only wheel imperfection really on this one. It's got a rash there and it's got a little gouge there. But it's an, overall, it's an excellent condition. Make sure the wheels all match, make sure they're all factory. If it's got a lock on it like that, make sure you've got the lock in the vehicle. Okay, the wheel lock that matches up to this pattern. Look at the make and model of the tires. All four should be matching, or at least two and two. Two matching in the front, two matching in the rear. And there is a way, and make sure it's got plenty of tread. And there is a way to actually, you'll have to watch another video on how to do it, but there are markings on the tires that tell you when that tire was manufactured so you can see how old the tires are. All right, but usually, you know, visually you can tell if it's got plenty of tread, if it's got uneven wear, if it's got, you know, um, if it's dry rotting or not, you're able to tell a lot of that just by visually closely inspecting the vehicle. Watch a separate video on that. Now what you're going to do, sticking with the mechanical again, vehicle's been running. What you're going to do is, and again, this depends on the auction, you're going to put the vehicle with your foot on the brake. You're going to put the vehicle on drive and you're going to pull up the emergency brake and we're going to check and make sure the emergency brake engages and releases in the process here. You're gonna, you're gonna put your foot on the brake firmly, pull up the emergency brake. You're gonna have the hood open. You're gonna put the vehicle in drive. 
with your foot on the brake all the way down, you're going to give it a little bit of gas. We're trying to get the engine to move and we're going to see if we're going to need mounts. If there's more than an inch and a half, two inches of movement, you're probably going to need mounts for the engine. You do that brake trick in drive and in reverse. Now, also be aware of this. When you put the vehicle in drive, it should engage smoothly and quickly within one, one and a half seconds without a jolt or any strange noises in drive and in reverse. Otherwise, if it doesn't walk away from the vehicle, it's probably got an issue with the transmission coming up or it could be transmission, a transmission mount issue or something loose in the drivetrain. But hey, better safe than sorry, right? Also, what you'll want to do is, again, you want to make sure you have plenty of room in front of the vehicle, plenty of room behind the vehicle, okay? And you'll want to move the vehicles that might be blocking your vehicle in sufficiently to do this safely. What you'll want to do again, put it in park, foot on the brake, put it in drive, let the vehicle roll forward a little bit, make sure it engages smoothly again, and then hit the brakes kind of hard so as to try to make the vehicle jolt forward. And in the process, you're able to assess whether or not the vehicle might need suspension work. Also, you might hear grinding in the brake system. You get the idea. If you hear strange noises with the brakes or the suspension, or you hear that, like that crunchy sound that the uh, strut towers make when they're all worn out, you might need suspension work. You want to keep that in mind. Do that little test where you put it in gear and you hit the brakes with plenty of room in front of you and behind you, both in drive and in reverse. Again, keep it in mind that it should engage smoothly and quickly into drive and reverse. Put the vehicle back in park, give it a bunch of gas again, and then again, check your rear view mirror and your side views for smoke. When you scan the vehicle, if the auction, again, this is auction specific, if the auction doesn't allow scanning the vehicle, don't scan the vehicle. But there's usually gonna be a uh, port down here for scanning the vehicle, and there is on this one. And you'll wanna just attach a Bluetooth device and download a, uh, I'm very happy with a software package. It was five bucks. It's called Torque. You'll want to make sure that the uh, monitors, they're called system monitors. There are six to eight of them. And it'll be oxygen sensor, ignition, evaporative, catalytic converter. All of those have to be checked off. You can't have one that's not checked off. They've all got to be checked off. And then on top of it, you'll want to check and make sure that there aren't any stored trouble codes in the vehicle's computer and if there are I mean this is just for me not for you when I go to the auction there will be guys who will disconnect a uh, fuel injector to make the engine appear as if it's got issues but it doesn't I reconnect the injector and the idle smooths out and I'm willing to take the chance on it because I have the experience doing this for years and years okay at the auction, I run across that, and if I'm looking for a vehicle for you, I'll make you aware of it, and of course, I'll stand behind the vehicle if I do take that chance. So you'll want to scan the vehicle for sure, and if the auction doesn't allow you to scan it, don't scan it, okay? Abide by all the auction rules at all times. Now let's take a look-see at the uh, trunk. Make sure that uh, the gas cap pops. Absolutely make sure the gas cap pops, okay? And that, that uh, Sometimes you can tell if the vehicle has been repainted in here too, okay? Take this off and take a look at it. Obviously you want to make sure it doesn't smell like mildew back here, that you don't have a leak through the seals. You want to check for your spare tire and your jack. Some vehicles don't come with a spare tire. They just come with an inflator. Uh, also, for you guys that are real sticklers, you could check the weld marks in the trunk to make sure they're factory and that the vehicle wasn't in a severe rear end collision. You could also do that from underneath. Like I said, with your phone, you just stick your phone down there. And then take a look at the video. You could do that, what I just did with my phone, all along the bottom there. Get on your back and stick the phone down, the, down there along the frame and you can look for frame damage on the vehicle. If it's a truck, it's really easy to do. 
you'll want to make sure that you look for paint oxidation. Paint oxidation is a killer. If oxidation is coming in here, it's going to start coming in up here on the, on the uh, hood, on the trunk. Paint oxidation is a killer. When a little bit comes in, believe me, it's a matter of months before it takes over the entire vehicle. And hey, when you have a beautiful factory finish like this on the vehicle, you know, with all the flakes and everything, the pearl, it's just gorgeous. It's priceless on a vehicle like this. It's an 08 and it's got just perfect paint because it's a California car. Hasn't been uh, subjected to 115 degree summers, 30 degree winters out here in Las Vegas. Incidentally, that also gives you better quality suspension parts, everything under the hood, the hoses, all the moving components, all the friction parts. Pound for pound, the California vehicle gives you more bang for the buck. Now again, obviously, um, you'll want to check all the seats and everything carefully, cosmetically, okay? Check all the uh, individual switches on each door. Make sure they work in addition to the master control up front. Don't, if it's got rear air conditioning the vehicle, make sure you've got proper flow there. Look for the manual and everything. If you got both keys, that's excellent. Make sure this comes down and that, you know, we have no surprises. Everything is nice and clean. If you're a real stickler and you have to have a, you know, perfect vehicle. Um, make sure this carpet over here isn't all burnt. Some people are particular about that. Turn the stereo on and make sure that you don't, and turn it up all the way. Play with the bass, treble and all that. Make sure that uh, you don't have any blown out speakers. Like I said uh, earlier on, navigation, if it's got navigation, make sure it's got the disc, make sure it's good for your area, and make sure that all the functions work. Start playing with all the keys in the navigation. If it's got a touch screen, okay, make sure that uh, you know, you, you're touching the, all the buttons on the screen and that the screen is accepting all the commands. Leave no stone unturned. Make sure everything works as it should open and close. You might want to even test the seat memory buttons. Make sure that you don't have any airbag lights on. That's a common thing. There should be no lights on in the dash. Glass. You want to go all the way around the vehicle and you want to make sure that you don't have pits or cracks in the glass. You want to look underneath the windshield wiper. If it's got a sticker on it, go inside the vehicle, look behind the sticker, peel off the sticker, look behind it. Pay particular attention to here because it's, you know, tinted and it's a little bit tougher to see. Look at all the glass and look for cracks. Make sure that all the molding around it is intact, especially like on a, a German vehicle. They've got the plastic molding going all the way around. A lot of vehicles do. This particular one doesn't. Make sure that that molding is good if that's important to you. It's not all cracked and raunchy. Some of those cost a lot of money and there's labor involved in taking the perfectly good glass off, they're probably going to crack it in the process of taking it off, okay, just to replace the molding. And the molding is a fortune, so you want to keep all that stuff in mind when you do this. Now look, that's how you troubleshoot a vehicle. When I purchase a vehicle for you, I go through everything that we just described. Again, depending on the auction, if they allow a test drive, I'll test drive it. If they don't, they don't. Now I'll tell you the only time I end up getting burnt. Really, this is the only time I'll end up getting burnt. I'll give you some examples of mistakes I've made in the past. One of them is any BMW V8, any BMW V8 out of warranty, valve seals, leaky valve seals, any Nissan CVT transmission, you're going to have issues. You're going to have issues. Research the heck out of it. Uh, the other one, uh, a, um, a German transmission, the um, ZF transmission especially in the early 2000s. This vehicle can be checked out, scanned, driven, until you drive it 60 to 80 miles, maybe 100, 120 miles. The check engine light will not come on because you need to get the vehicle up to about 70 or 80 on the freeway and drive it a certain number of miles for the torque converter and the automatic transmission to try and engage, at which time you find out that because it doesn't hold proper pressure, there might be a leaky seal deep inside the transmission that requires a lot of labor to get to and replace. You're going to get a check engine light that comes on and the vehicle is going to jolt heavily after you've driven it X number of miles and gotten it over 70, 75 miles per hour. There is no way to foresee that. And of course, if you ever run into something like that, 
I'll take the vehicle back. All right, folks, if you like what you're seeing here, Bob at SellMeTheCar.com. Bob at SellMeTheCar.com. Hire me to find your next vehicle. I'm licensed and bonded in the state of Nevada. $100,000 bond to secure your interest in the vehicle. Never had a complaint since 2003 with the Nevada DMV. You're welcome to check with them. A plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. My $100,000 bond puts my money where my mouth is. Again, Bob at SellMeTheCar.com or you can just text me. My phone number is all over the place, including the link in the description below. Let me tell you a little bit about Japanese vehicles. A lot of people obviously are interested in Japanese vehicles and this is the way to go. When I first started in this business, I noticed that even the dealers at the auction were paying private party Kelly Blue Book for these vehicles at the auction, plus the auction buy fee. I was thinking, man, are you guys in the wholesale or the resale business? We're shooting ourselves in the foot here, aren't we? And I couldn't figure out why. You know the reason for why? These vehicles, first of all, if you have a clean, older Japanese vehicle, I could sell it at the auction in your behalf and get very close to Kelly Blue Book, private party, minus my fee, minus the auction fee for you. I guarantee you it will be gone on the same day that we take it to the auction. Done deal. The reason for why they pay so much at the auction where they should be paying wholesale for the vehicle is because the buy here, pay here car dealers are looking for these vehicles. They buy them. They go through the vehicle, make sure it's serviceable. Even if it's got 200,000 miles, the vehicle is still going to be good for three to five years of relatively trouble-free motoring if it's been well-maintained. The Honda and the Toyota product. Not the Mitsubishi, not the Mazda, not the other jet, not the Nissan, but specifically the Honda and the Toyota product. I've worked at both companies. Their reputation is impeccable. The resale value is so high on these vehicles for precisely what I just told you. So the buy here, pay here dealers will buy this vehicle at the auction and they will sell it for, by the time the interest and everything adds up and you add up all the payments, two to three times what they paid for the vehicle at the auction and they paid well over the high Kelly Blue Book trade-in for this vehicle at the auction. So I want you to keep in mind, look, if you want to buy one of these vehicles in excellent condition regardless of the miles or the year, you want to keep in mind that you're going to pay a premium price at the auction. Okay, you're going to pay that Kelly Blue Book private party at the auction plus the buyer's fee plus my fee. But here's what I offer you that most people cannot offer you. I offer you a selection of 10,000 vehicles between Nevada and Southern California. So if you have all your money together, you're ready to get the most bang for the buck, and you're ready to have a pro troubleshoot the vehicle for you, like I just described, bob at sellmethecar.com. You've got all of my information in the description down below. Hopefully you picked up on a couple of things. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, share it on your social media. If you have any questions, just uh, ask them down below. I'll answer them as fast as I can to the best of my abilities. Make sure that you ring the bell and uh, in addition to your subscription to make sure that you get the latest videos before anybody else. I do like to upload videos of vehicles before I purchase them from the auction very briefly. I put them on my Facebook site or on YouTube and, um, and then erase them after the person that uh, wanted to look at the vehicle sees it and gives me a yay or nay. Incidentally, these vehicles, they all have condition reports that go over most of the cosmetic um, troubleshooting procedures that I already went over. So there will be a condition report on all of these vehicles uploaded onto the auctions website and I could show you all the flaws before we earmark a vehicle for me to walk up to and troubleshoot like I just showed you in this video. Once again, Bob Asadi Deals on Wheels, Bob at SellMeTheCar.com. Thanks for your time and hey, I'll see you on the next video.